Well, hello, mellow fellows. It's Terry here, your resident cat lady. However, it's my responsibility to warn you guys not to eat tangerine and carrots at the same time. I heard that eating two orange things together is unhealthy. We have a lot of fun on this channel talking about Bob's Burgers. One of my favorite things about this show is is mixed between being wholesome and chaotic at the same time. Most characters on this show have embodied this dichotomy. We have gotten a great mix of sensible and crazy in this show. However, I think that everyone can agree that when it comes to chaotic energy, no one can defeat Gail's insanity. People call Linda crazy, but Gail makes her look normal by comparison. Gail is a fan favorite for a reason. She is the most erratic, unpredictable character on the show. Nothing this woman does or says makes a lick of sense. Gail is Linda's kid's sister and self-imposed rival. Gail is a lot of things. Gail is gullible, sensitive, manipulative, and socially anxious and irresponsible. Gail is the type of person who has had a hard time holding down a job or a boyfriend because of how scattered her behavior is. Gail is the definition of a crazy auntie and she honestly gives cat ladies a bad name. Gail has two sides to her. There's a side of her that is incredibly selfish and inconsiderate of others. That side has a lot of attention seeking tendencies that inconveniences everyone around her, often subjecting people to her bizarre art and performances. But don't criticize her art because she's unable to take any form of negative feedback. Not to mention she makes bad financial decisions and is often in debt for dumb things like oils and blenders. However, there is another side to her. The side that is caring and nurturing. The side that cares deeply for her sisters and wants to spend time with her. This side of her does appreciate and tries to look out for her family. Even though Gail is often delusional, there are times where she's self-aware and knows that she has issues that she needs to work on. Gail's the type of person that you love in small doses. Her personality is extremely drained for anyone to be able to handle. I wanted to talk about Gail because she's a fun person to talk about. That's like 90% of my reasons why I wanted to make this video. Also, because I recently talked about Linda's childhood and relationships with Gail in my Why Linda Loves Bob video, I wanted to tell the other side of the story. As always, let's go all the way back into our childhood and work our way up from there. So grab your peppermint oil and your shaving cats and let's start from the beginning. Gail is the younger sister of Linda. To be honest, even though we've known Gail since season one, we don't know much about how she was as a child. We do know that Linda was the main one looking after her. Even though I can't speak about how she was as a kid, I can talk about her teenage years. As a teen, Gail tended to follow Linda around everywhere. Gail and Linda were even in a band called the Tatas together. Gail wrote songs for their band, but Linda never let her play them. She didn't get to play one of her songs until the class reunion, which is one of my personal favorite songs in the show. It's so funny and unserious, I love it. Plus she got a little makeout sesh after, so the episode was definitely a win for Gail. Gail used to play pranks with Linda and would often help Linda with her mischievous schemes, like throwing water balloons at girls or helping knock over pumpkins to cover up their mistake. If you know Linda, you'll hear her talking about her old frenemy named Monica a lot. Monica was the cheerleader that Linda followed around. Monica would make Linda hold her cigarettes, make Linda drive her to the mall, and overall use Linda as a lackey. Linda didn't realize she was being used because she desperately wanted to be in the cool crowd. Linda has a weakness for pretty and charismatic people. As long as you're pretty, Linda will listen to you. Gail, on the other hand, knew Monica was using Linda and absolutely could not like her. Gail ended up being right about Monica, even later saves Linda from being tricked by a girl named Angie later in the series. Gail is on some level socially aware of the people Linda surrounds herself with. So yeah, while Gail was somewhat crazy even back then, it sounds like they took care of each other in their younger years. I feel like because she was younger, she didn't have so much anxiety about her life. However, once her life choices start to affect her like it is now, her worst traits got amplified in adulthood. Even though she seemed more stable when she was younger, she was still fragile. Gail was always known to flip out and go into violent rages of jealousy, so the family had to tiptoe around her. For example, her parents kept replacing her fish Goldilicious when it died and eventually pretended they sent it away to be studied. Gail believed her fish was immortal and would send her birthday cards every year, so she didn't know that she was being lied to up until recently, in her 40s, when Linda to accidentally told her the truth about it. She obviously flipped out at her grown age. It's a clear example of how Gail can't handle the truth about certain topics. She's like 42 years old. She should have figured this out by now. When they were younger, Linda didn't even want to tell Gail that she won the pumpkin contest because she knew Gail wouldn't take it well. The fact that Linda sacrificed her own moment to win something just to not upset her sister show there's a clear issue of Linda's enabling. Linda reframes from celebrating herself so that she doesn't feel like she's rubbing it in Gail's face. Now Gail did say later in the episode so that she doesn't want Linda to hide her milestones from her. She wants to know what's going on in Linda's life. 
which is nice, but realistically, Gail makes it hard for Linda to talk about things. I think one of the worst example of Linda's enabling Gail is letting Gail steal her boyfriends. Whenever Linda would date a guy, Gail would try to take them. She would create a whole fantasy in her head about having an affair with them behind Linda's back. Gail would do this until she loses interest in the guy and moves on to the new crush. Even though Linda kind of brushes this off, it's obviously not okay. Not only is that a huge betrayal to Linda, but it also shows how little regard Gail has for Linda's feelings. Gail views it as drama and fun and not for the breach of trust that it is, almost treating it like a soap opera. Gail even went as far as to do this with Bob, who Linda is married to and has kids with. The fact that she was willing to destroy Linda's marriage is insane. I will circle back to this Gail and Bob episode in a little bit, but for now, I just wanted to say that Gail's disloyalty to her sister is usually shown when men is evolved. Anyway, I want to move on to Gail's adulthood. We'll come back to the relationship stuff. As an adult, Gail almost seems incapable of taking care of herself. Gail is very naive and tends to fall for all types of scams. Gail is extremely sensitive about literally anything. She flies off the handle so much that it's easier just to lie and say what she wants to hear. Her fragile ego feeds into her paranoia and creates an unending cycle of anxiety. One wrong thing will send her into a mental breakdown and she will spiral out of control. Gail openly dislikes her life and tends to lie to her parents about her living situation. Gail is canonically very annoying to those around her which kind of leads her to being avoided. Due to her lack of social skills, Gail often gets lonely. She doesn't know how to effectively keep people in her life. Her inappropriate actions often drive people away. It's actually sad when you think about it. That's probably why she has so many cats. I mean, I have cats but you know I just like cats. I think Gail gets cats because she's lonely. However she does recognize how bad her life is and does use it to manipulate others into giving in to what she wants. Most of the time she uses sympathy to convince Linda into giving her money or guilt her family into something. Sometimes she even fakes an injury to gain more sympathy from others. Gail infantilizes herself so people can take care of her and when they're taking care of her she often gets all the attention that she's been craving. As you can tell Linda is the main one who indulges her sister. Linda is unable to blame Gail for anything she does. Even Bob has told Linda that she mothers Gail too much. This is ultimately Al and Gloria's fault for making Linda responsible for Gail since they were kids. It's almost as if the parents couldn't handle Gail and they showed that responsibility over to Linda. Linda has learned that the way to appease or to calm Gail down is to indulge her. So that's what she's been doing for almost 40 years, acting like her sister's caretaker. The only thing that Gail can do on her own is art. Gail is an artist who dabbles in many media. She paints, does poetry, she does one woman shows, and she did an art retreat one time. Gail even made a Dark Souls level difficult board game that she couldn't get published by the major game companies. She often is overconfident in her abilities and refuses to hear any negative feedback when it comes to her art. She thinks that she's an expert about art because she listens to an audiobook and that she's just too good for mainstream fame. Gail is so delusional that it's honestly hilarious and almost inspiring. We all inspire to be that Delulu. She also writes songs and plays the keyboard. Art is how Gail expresses herself and for the most part I don't see anything wrong in having a creative outlet. It's usually when she starts hanging up pictures of animals butts or chasing people through the woods is where the problems start. Painting with spit is a touch too far for my taste. I shouldn't be surprised. This is the same woman who says she was afraid of using toothpaste because she was afraid she'll get addicted. Don't forget that her psychic told her that she was lactose intolerant and that she has a ghost who's obsessed with her. Perfectly same things to say by Miss Gail. Now that we talked about Gail in a general sense, I wanted to talk about her specific relationships in the show. I feel like her personal relationships are where her character is the most complicated. At times she is very reliable and kind-hearted, other times she is painfully awful. As a character, she is hilarious and I love her, and I look forward to any episode she appears in. However, from a realistic standpoint, most people would have cut her out of their life for being toxic a long time ago. So let's start off talking about something easy, her cats. Gail has three cats, Mr. Business, Pink Eye, and John Claw Van Dame. Mr. Business is the one we see the most. He had a whole episode about him trying to be the next chef cat, and he's usually the one messing with Bob. Mr. Business is apparently the most aggressive and distrustful out of the three cats, according to Louise. Gail stole Mr. Business off of somebody's porch, so maybe he's mean to get revenge. Mr. Business and other cats hate the sound of her voice and aren't well behaved in the slightest. Gail probably needs to call Jackson Galaxy or something. Gail cares deeply about her cats, even though they clearly hate her. When Mr. Business had a chance at auditioning for Chef Cat, she noticed that he was so stressed that he looked his stomach bald. She decided to pull him from the audition because it was negatively affecting him. To 
to her, his health and happiness were more important than the money she would have made from him being Chef Cat. It's sweet how much she cares about her animals. She even changes their nails with the season. Gail takes way better care of her cats than she takes care of herself. I want to talk about her cats because it's one of her few wholesome relationships. Even if they do scratch the hell out of her, it's all love. Though maybe the pound is right for not giving her that fourth cat. She already puts cat food in her oatmeal. I don't think she needs any more cats. Now let's move on to her romantic relationships. Gail has a history with harassing men, especially Linda's men. Like I said earlier, she harassed and trying to steal Linda's boyfriends all through her teenage years. Gail wants what Linda has, so she's always attracted to Linda's partners. She supposedly dated Linda's ex Carl, quote unquote, for three years behind her back. Linda obviously knew, but that's just awful on principle. Girl code, girl. Girl code especially sister code. Gail goes on a lot of random online dates, but she only got a second date once with Mr. Frond. Gail is like Sutton from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, losing a guy in one date. She even tends to stalk her suitors or leave log messages on her answering machine if she can't get a hold of them. You know what? I would say that she is almost as boy crazy as Tina, but she's definitely more desperate than Tina, a thousand percent, not saying something. Tina's the same one who collected Jimmy Jr.'s marshmallows, so. Gail's standards are super low. Let me run you down the requirements for dating Gail. Um, Gail wants a guy who's a man, who's got a face, and can go outside. That's it. She did get to make out with a couple guys throughout the series. Like I said earlier, Derek D. Metropolis heard her little love song and yeah, they ended up making out. Good for her. I guess he really did make her yoga Greek. She also made out with Mr. Fishholder after their electric love song and he promptly ran away after. She also kissed Mort when she thought the world was ending. However, that was not consensual at all. Mort was forced onto that kiss, which is again, not okay. She did have a bit of potential with a guy named Neil, the guy that she um, kidnapped. He was the guy who said he had a dead wife, but he actually meant a dead cat. However, he has not appeared since that episode, so I guess things did not work out. I do want to touch on her short relationship with Mr. Fran. She dated Mr. Fran for like two episodes. They were strangely compatible. They both are eccentric and strange in their own ways, but kind of similar. Both of them follow rules. Both of them are wound very tightly. Both are dedicated artists and both are disliked by most people. Most importantly, both of them love cats. I think Mr. Fran's cat name is Mr. Bojangles. Gail and Fran are both weird in a very specific specific kind of way and both just want to find love. It's obvious why both of them have trouble dating. Gail and Frond are just awkward and they just don't gel with most people. Anyway, Gail and Mr. Frond met at a cat salon for their cats. Mr. Bojangles was getting a blowout and it seems like Mr. Frond was the one who approached her. He even made a doll for her out of his dead grandmother's shawl, which is an automatic no for me because why? I refuse to get haunted by someone's dead ass grandmother. Is that rude? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, anyway, they were an interesting couple. However, for unknown reasons, they broke up that season. I'm pretty sure Fran is the one who broke up with her, mostly because I can't imagine Gail breaking up with anyone ever. <laughs> I think that he probably broke up with her because she was too much for even him. And Mr. Fran is already a lot. Even though Mr. Fran is weird, he still is very grounded. He is not crazy. <laughs> He is very much stable and I feel like Gail is just unhinged in a type of way Mr. Frond is not compatible with. I feel like there's a difference between being weird and being actually unhinged. Basically there's like a certain amount of normalcy to Mr. Frond, you know, he can feel like a real person whereas Gail is Gail so I can see why they broke up. Now let's talk about Gail and Bob's dreadful alleged affair. Something I hate talking about, it, it, it actually, that's like my least favorite episode in the entire series. Gail constantly flirts and technically she did S.A. Bob. She made out with Bob while he was on the influence of dentist drugs. He was obviously not in his right mind and in no way consented to making out with Gail. He thought it was Linda. Linda, not Gail. And Gail knew this because Linda sent Gail to pick him up from the dentist and he was very clearly, obviously high. So yeah, I would consider this SA very much so. Like I said, he thought it was his wife that he was flirting with and making out with and sticking his tongue in their ear. And when he found out that it was Gail he was kissing, he was distraught after what happened and told Linda right away. He's not like, you know, a lot of other TV show husbands who would hide it. It's like he wouldn't try to cover it up. 
he went straight to Linda and told her exactly what happened. And I feel bad for Bob. Linda was not surprised that Gail has done this because again, Gail does this with all of her partners. You know, I don't know if Gail actually did the same thing with Hugo. Imagine Gail and Hugo dating. Oh my God, I don't even want to think about that. Anyway, Linda wanted Bob to pretend to have an affair with Gail for the rest of the episode to help boost her self-esteem. Her plan was to bring Dr. Yap along with them to the ski trip and she would try to get Gail to move on from her crush on Bob to Dr. Yap, and which was a very crazy, insane, non nonsensical plan. Like poor Bob. <laughs> Bob was continuously harassed by Gail the entire episode and it was so uncomfortable to watch. I skip it every time I go through a rewatch which is a shame because I love Dr. Yap and he was really funny in that episode. But thankfully at the end of the episode Gail did move on from Bob to Dr. Yap after Bob's teeth was pulled out and he was slapped continuously by his wife whose plan it was to begin with. But I guess seeing it in action is different than implying Bob do something with her and plus she's actually married to Bob versus those other guys were just boyfriends. I mean that was a boyfriend of three years that Gail was messing with but you know you know what I mean. It's different with a husband. The fact that Gail was trying to have an affair with Bob while the kids were there is insane. It's awful. This was way back in season two and it's one of my least favorite episodes if you can tell. And even if you think that that's just a one-off episode, it's never happened again. In season six during the Thanksgiving episode, Gail hit on Bob again you know saying if something happens happens and he said nothing's gonna happen and she said not with that attitude and given their history i really doubt that she was joking luckily they faced out gail's crush on bob which is for the better i love gail but being willing to sleep with your sister's husband is not acceptable especially especially when it's bob and linda listen if this was peter and lois i i would i would honestly not care but not bob and linda to take an innocent couple like bob and linda and try to ruin that like she can go to hell not only is it a violation of Linda's trust, but the damage that an affair would do to Jean, Tina, and Louise would be heartbreaking, especially after that really sad divorce episode with Rudy. The Belchers are a tight-knit family, so having Gail so casually try to break up the family makes her incredibly unlikable in that episode. It's definitely the worst Gail has been in the entire series. It displays all of her worst traits. The only grace I can give to Gail in that situation is that this was in season two of the show, and I feel like most of the characters were at their worst morally speaking in seasons one and two. The family has gone through an opposite of flanderization, character development if you will. Most of the characters in seasons one and two had a lot of one note traits and they were very different to how they are now. The family in season two are completely different than the Belchers we know right now in season 14. I do think that Gail's character has gotten more integrity as the show has gone on. She's still not a great sister but she has a hit on Bob in a long time. The last time was in season six so it's been like eight seasons since she's even tried anything so I would consider that part of her kind of phased out. So she has grown. If I'm going to talk about Gail honestly I really do need to bring up everything that she's done in the entire series. Even though this happened in season two and everything is different now the thing is is like seasons one and two are still canon so I have to talk about it like we can't just pretend that didn't happen. I'm just glad that they've grown out of that and phase that away. Anyway, let's move on from that. Now I would talk about friends next, but Gail doesn't have any, so we'll just skip to the family talk. I want to circle back to Gloria and Al for a moment. Gail does not have a good relationship with her parents. Gail is often fighting with her mother Gloria and gets annoyed with her dad Al. Gail lies about her lifestyle to them so that she doesn't have to hear her mother's criticism. Gail lies and tells them that she's rich and has a hot lover and you know, regular lying things, making her life seem better than it is. Gloria is a very critical mother and she's been very critical of Linda's life. So you can only imagine the things she would say about Gail if she found out about how she was living. Gail and Gloria often fight about small things and hold on to long-term grudges against each other. When Gail got stuck in the ottoman with her dad's stinky slippers, it started a really long feud between them. Linda often has to play the peacekeeper between them and tries her best to manage everybody's emotions, which isn't easy because both Gloria and Gail are dramatic and sensitive. Gail visits them in Florida sometimes, but I don't think that her parents have actually seen where she lives. If they did, I think her lies about being rich would be hard to believe. It's not a very healthy relationship between them. If Gail had better parents, she wouldn't be so 
Gail. Next, let's talk about something good. Let's talk about her good relationships with the Belcher kids. The kids love their Aunt Gail. They view her in the same light as they view Teddy, a wacky adult who would pretty much let them get away with whatever they want. Gail lets them eat ice cream from breakfast. She lets them watch TV whenever and how long they want. She makes them butter for lunch. If they wanted a rule-free weekend, they can go to Gail's house. Louise did run away to her place after all. So Gail is a fun, kind of safe adult for them to count on. And you know what? She is a good auntie. However, there is an obvious downside to staying with Gail. Gail often forces them to do cat nail salon. She forces them to watch her do her performance art or overall just makes them do things they really don't want to do. Like she made them play Gale Force Wins for six hours or when they all had to write short stories about her to help her feel better after getting dumped by a guy named Stacy online. The kids can do whatever they want around Gale but still has to suffer through her whims. Also Gale is very much like a kid herself. That's why she's so gullible. The kids often have to look after her just as much as she looks after them. But let me be clear, when it comes to the kids, Gail is relatively responsible she cares for them and will help them in their times of need. When they needed a ride to get a recipe for their mom, Gail was the one to drive them there. When Louise was scared of the dentist, Gail was the one who helped her through her fear, something Bob and Linda couldn't even do. Ever since then, Louise has not been afraid to go to the dentist, all because of Gail. Gail is also the one who got Tina those Boys For Now tickets and picked them up after they got kicked off the tour bus. My point is Gail can be reliable at times. It's rare, but it happens. I like that she has a special relationship with the kids. After all, the kids do obviously love her. Next, we're gonna talk about Gail and Bob again, but this time in terms of in-laws. As in-laws, they have a rocky relationship. Gail drives Bob up the wall with her antics. Bob has talked to Linda about giving Gail money and has told Linda to stop babying Gail. However, most of the time that doesn't work. Linda loves Gail, so Bob tries his best to tolerate her. Bob is incredibly patient with Gail and puts up with a lot of her stunts, like her bringing her cats to their apartment knowing that Bob is allergic. Having Bob pull her through the snow, even though she was faking the injury and could have walked on her own on Thanksgiving to make it worse. We all know that that's Bob's favorite holiday and she ruined his dinner because she wanted attention because she thought Mr. Fron dumped her. Not to mention she's constantly borrowing money for everything and anything under the sun and refuses to be independent. She is definitely a bad in-law. They do have good moments together. Even though she did selfishly ruin Thanksgiving, Bob still ended up saving her cat and hurting his back in the process. Gail paid his kindness by pulling him the rest of the way to his house in the blizzard. Even though it was the least she could have done, it was nice that she made the effort regardless. She could have just left him in the snow. Another moment I could think of is when Bob and Gail worked together to get Mr. Business the Chef Cat audition. When Ian insulted Gail and Mr. Business, Bob defended them and tried his best to get them that audition. Even though Bob does get annoyed with Gail, he doesn't want a random cat agent to take advantage of Gail and her naive nature. Bob was actually really heated in that episode. It was hilarious. I admire how Bob defends Gail like a member of the family. It shows that he's willing to accept Gail, even though she is very hard to get along with. Because Linda loves her, he tries his best to accept her as family. Family, even though Linda's family is pretty insufferable. Most of us feel bad for Bob when he tries to tolerate Gail. However, I noticed that Gail has been getting more tolerable as the series goes on. Gail has always been a very entertaining character from the first episode she's been on screen. However, while she's always been hilarious, she was also very unlikable from a moral standpoint. Not from a character standpoint, we all love her as the character, but like as like a moral standpoint, she was pretty unlikable. As the show has gone on, writers have made an effort to show that she does have good sides. Gail is still unstable and weird even in the recent series, but she's not as awful as she was in season two, obviously. She's not as bad as she used to be. Regardless, Gail still annoys Bob. Not as much as Gloria annoys Bob, but it's a very close second. I say these two have a very love-hate relationship as far as in-laws go. More so hate with a small amount of obligated family love. Bob must be a saint because I would have fought Gail and I'm pretty sure a lot of us would have too. Lastly, I want to talk about Gail's relationship with Linda. If you want like my full version of what I think of the relationship, I did speak about it at length in my Why Linda Loves Bob video. In that video, I talked about how much Linda pours into Gail. Linda is incapable of letting Gail take any accountability for her actions. She babies Gail to the point where nothing is Gail's fault in Linda's eyes. There's always some excuse for what Gail does. Gail flirting with Bob? 
eh, that's self-esteem issues. Gail faking a sprained ankle on Thanksgiving and making Bob drive through the snow to pick her up and then making him drag her through the snow. Yeah, she was sad because Mr. Fromm dubbed her. That's why she had to do that. Gail borrowing money for a yurt. Eh, she needed a workshop investor, obviously. Nothing in Linda's eyes is Gail's fault. That's why Bob is important to Linda. He helps her establish boundaries and gently reminds her that Gail is in fact a 42 year old woman. He tries his best to keep Linda from always running to Gail's rescue whenever Gail calls, which is honestly all the time. Linda and Gail have a good relationship when Gail isn't being crazy. They do have fun together like sisters. Like I said earlier, they used to do pranks all the time together. They even recently did some prank calling with Gretchen. Linda loves Gail and often treats her like a little sister. So yes, they do have their really good sister moments that everybody loves. On the other hand, Gail has a love-hate relationship with Linda. It's completely one-sided. Linda loves her. Gail has this kind of hatred, negativity towards Linda. Gail has always been in competition with Linda. She always wants what Linda has and always wants to one-up her or try to diminish what Linda has accomplished. She makes everything Linda does as no big deal as she's obviously doing better. Gail often insults Linda and calls her unattractive and old. Granted, siblings are known to be annoying towards each other, but I would argue that usually insults go both ways. Linda doesn't say anything like that to Gail. So Gail constantly calling Linda ugly is very mean-spirited and speaks to her insecurities. She often tears Linda down to build herself up. Linda just lets her do it because she feels bad for how awful Gail's life is. Linda always feels responsible for Gail's feelings, yet Gail has no regard for Linda's feelings. Whenever Linda wins at something minor, Gail will fly into a rage. Gail would literally scream, cry, throw up, and slide down a wall. No exaggeration. Gail does love her sister, even though she doesn't act like it. She likes spending time with Linda and is down to hang out with her anytime. Like I said earlier, when she thought Angie was going to take advantage of Linda, she raced there to stop her from joining a pyramid scheme. She did help the kids get a recipe for Mother's Day for Linda. Then there was that time where she helped Linda get Wheelie to the skating rink. Then again, she did betray her right after and told the kids, but you know, she showed up. Their relationship is very complicated. There's so much love, but there's also so much jealousy and insecurity. Gail even said that she considers Linda to be her best friend and arch nemesis at the same time. It really depends on which episode you're watching if Gail's going to be a good sister or a terrible one. Their relationship at the end of the day is one-sided and kind of unhealthy. Linda enables all of Gail's bad habits and is not good for Gail in the long run. Gail has thrown so much negativity towards Linda that it's almost emotionally abusive. Having Linda dim herself in order not to make Gail feel bad is not a good thing. Gail is extremely emotionally immature and takes out everything she's feeling on Linda. There are times when Linda and Gail have genuinely good moments. However, fundamentally, their relationship is very flawed. Linda is doing all the work in their relationship, and Gail, on the other hand, just does and says whatever she wants and kind of reaps the benefits. It's really not a fair relationship. Just because Linda is used to taking care of Gail and getting treated a certain way, it doesn't make it right. Linda is very patient and a loving sister, and Gail should try to reciprocate that a little more. She depends on Linda a lot, so she should be at least a little more supportive of Linda and not throw her under the bus every time the opportunity presents itself. I don't want this to come off as I hate Gail. I actually love Gail. It's just objectively, she's not a great person. <laughs> It's hard to defend that girl. I mean, like, I love her. Most people that answer my community poll have a love-hate relationship with Gail. None of us hate her, obviously. She's too funny to hate. It's just, we can't ignore the bad. <laughs> the bad's a lot. She's just, like I said, objectively not a great sister and objectively not a great in-law. She's a great auntie, but that's about it and a great cat mom, that counts for something. I personally wished Gail would approve a little bit more in the series. Most characters have been having some type of progress, especially characters like Teddy, who's had a lot of progress since his debut. Gail has kind of been the same for the past 14 seasons, with just a little bit of a change in attitude, just a little bit. Maybe just a little more independence or maybe finding a very patient guy to stick around for more than one date would help. If Teddy can get Kathleen, I do think that Gail should be able to catch somebody. Cross my fingers because she does want love. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm praying for you, girl. Maybe, you know, get her something better in terms of a job. Maybe, maybe give her more art opportunities. 
I kind of wish she just had a little bit more going on with her life. I understand that she's supposed to be the wacky sister, but after 14 seasons, I do think she needs some type of change in her life. Linda being in a big happy family with a good business probably makes Gail feel bad in comparison. Gail wants love and her standards are already non-existent. She, there is, it's almost impossible to lower her standards more than she already has. She still has trouble connecting with people. Obviously, I do think this has something to do with her obvious neurodivergency, and I do think the social aspect of relationships is what's holding her back. Seeing Linda live the life that Gail wants probably is eating her up inside, so that's why she lashes out. However, that is Gail's job to work through, her and her therapist. Only Gail can improve herself, and we as the audience can only hope that she gets it together. Gail is a character we all love to hate. Gail is eccentric, sensitive, and paranoid. Gail brings a level of chaotic energy to the show that no other character really brings, at least not on that level. Gail is a woman who cares deeply for her cat and has a deep love for her family, as well as a deep hatred for her family, but mostly love. While she is definitely the most eccentric of the family, she does have her iconic moments in the show. I can't really picture Bob's Burgers without Gail's poetry or her adorable cats. Hopefully her couch doesn't actually eat her and take her out of the show for good. While Gail is definitely not the most moral character, she is definitely one of the funniest in my opinion. Her life may be sad, but she does have a fun personality to make up for it. Gail is such an interesting character on the show. She has so much good, but so much bad. It makes for a fun video essay. Regardless if you love her or hate her, Gail's impact on the show is undeniable. She brings the drama, the antics, and the nonsense. Her presence on the show has always shaken things up no matter what episode she's in. Whether she's getting dizzy off her peppermint oils or wearing her turtleneck as pants, she is unpredictable. You never know what she's going to do next and that keeps things exciting. Gail can be awful one minute and self-aware the next. Her character is a natural wild card and that's what makes her so great for the show. Since Bob's Burgers is so rooted in reality, having eccentric characters like Gail and Mr. Fish Odor is very necessary to keep the show fun. Gail is the most delusional, hyperactive, and eccentric aunt a person can ask for. It doesn't matter if she's wearing a shrimp dress to moss, shaving her cat, or eating red lipstick. She'll always be remembered as the craziest aunt in animation. Let's bow our heads gracefully to Queen Gail of Castoros, the most powerful woman in all of the nine cat lives kingdoms. May her cat dragons and breast milk bring happiness to all. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.